All right, some of the things that are on my mind here September 20th, things that are in my craw and things that excite me as we head into this week's college and NFL season, but also let's not leave out some of the other things that are going on, like baseball. And let's start with Yankee Stadium, one of the great places in all of sports to go. You look at the history, the tradition, how rich it is, all the, the banners from winning championships, but also you look out there in the outfield and some of the great players that have played and been through Yankee Stadium, not only as home team, but as visitors also. And it is a wonderful place, and I was fortunate to go to, I've been to Yankee Stadium, many haven't. But I can tell you this, and I'm an old baseball school, old, old baseball stadium guy, old school. I love the rickety old stadiums. Those things excite me, and the new amenities do too, but those old stadiums. And it's a bummer that we're closing Yankee Stadium, but I know the next one's going to be just as special, and I'm sure the Yankee fans hope just as much tradition. But I will say this, as we close that stadium down, Yankee Stadium on Sunday for their final game is that if I had one stadium to go to, or I had to rank them in order, that if all these stadiums were closing at the same time and building new, new ballparks, I would definitely do this. I would go Fenway Park first, Wrigley Field second, Yankee Stadium third. Just the way the parks are set up and what goes on around. While Yankee Stadium, the tradition is unreal. Just walking into Fenway Park, great history. Wrigley Field, great history. Some of them for different reasons. But if you're talking about true baseball feel, when you walk in, you're not in a stadium, you're in a ballpark, it goes Fenway Park, Wrigley Field, first and second. How about the Tampa Bay Devil Rays? Is anybody still buying into this? Well, we should. We're about, a, we're about 10 games or so to go in the regular season in baseball. The question here, with this amazing team and the amazing season that they've had, still holding off the Yankees by, I mean, the, excuse me, the Red Sox by a game and a half in that division, is can they sustain it through October? We saw the Colorado Rockies step up and, bam, play great in the playoffs, got to the World Series, got swept. The key here is can Tampa deal with this and, and, and the Devil Rays without being overwhelmed? Are they naive enough, and I mean that in a good way, to sit there and say, hey, it doesn't matter if it's October baseball. We can take care of this thing. Apparently they're good enough when you've run through it this many games and still sitting in first place, but it can be overwhelming. It is a different tempo and a different pressure at the next level. Can the Tampa Bay Devil Rays handle that? in October and sustain this thing all the way through and be crowned champs. I don't think they will, but you know what? We've seen stranger things happen in an unbelievable season, and to them, I think they think it's just getting started, but October will be the key. Can they sustain it in very, very high-pressured situations? How about broadcasters in football? Now, I am one, and I sit back, and I watch the game different because I've been on both sides of it. There's just a couple things I need. When I'm watching a game, I just want my game announcers so please po quit pointing out the obvious. Unless you're on radio, of course, you've got to tell me the how, the who, the what, the why. But you know, when you're on TV and I'm watching a game, I don't need a, uh, an announcer to tell me, oh, we just overthrew him by 37 yards. We can see that. Okay, what I would like to know is how and why. How did he overthrow him by 30 yards? Was it a wrong route? Did the quarterback have bad mechanics? Did, and, and why did he do it? Hey, the guy was wide open. Did he see some underneath coverage that forced him to throw it high? Were his mechanics bad? Did the receiver run the wrong route by two yards that made it look like it was five yards overthrown when it really wasn't because if the receiver would have ran the right route, we'd have known. That's what a broadcaster's job is. Quit pointing out the obvious to me. There's some great ones out there that don't. There's, there are a couple of them. There's some good ones out there that sometimes do, and there's some that just don't get it. And if you're going to point out the obvious, then you know what? You're not doing us any good as a TV sportscaster. Quit pointing out the obvious. Don't insult the person who's watching that we saw somebody miss high. What a shock. And as far as studio analysts, come on now, being the fact that I was able to take a step back, quit being afraid that if you, if you rip a guy or if you're overly complimentary, somebody's going to get on you. If a guy throws five touchdowns, he should be patted on the back. Doesn't mean if he's your buddy and you're kissing his rear end. That's called doing your job. So do your job and prepare and quit being afraid because you played on that team or this guy might get mad at you. If he fumbles four times, he sucked that day. It's pretty simple. And we're allowed to let him know, okay? That's not nothing personal. I don't care what he's doing off the field as long as he's not breaking the law. That's his business. Tell me what's going on, but please do me a favor and quit being afraid to criticize or overcompliment and afraid that some media critic might get mad like I do. I'd rather have you tell me the truth and be wrong and give me your opinion and be wrong and maybe not pick the right game, but be opinionated and let us know what's going on. That's why you get paid. Any Tom, Dick, and Harry can walk off the street and tell me stuff that's obvious and not be afraid to say anything. You know who the worst announcers are? 
or the ones that everybody thinks is great, just sits on the fence and is afraid to talk. Quit it. If you played the game and you understand, or even if you didn't play the game, if you're going to be a critic, be a critic without having to worry about, oh, they're going to get mad because I kissed his ass. Oh, they're going to get mad because I didn't criticize him hard enough or I did criticize him too hard. That is your job. So do it like you're supposed to do it, please, and make it all more enjoyable for us to watch studio shows and to watch broadcasting games so the average fan, all of us that just watch and tune in and listen to you guys and get a lot of our information from what you're doing, just, just do it and don't point out the obvious to us and don't be afraid to be critical. NFL coaches, I want you to keep an eye on these five and we keep talking about it, but at no time have I seen five teams play so pathetic that we could actually have more than one coach fired during the season. In Oakland, there is a, the small light at the end of the tunnel is McFadden and Jamarcus Russell, but Lane Kiffin, front office, coaching staff, if he lasts the whole season, that would be amazing because we didn't even think he was going to come back this year and coach. There's a lot of pressure there. Keep an eye on Detroit on Rod Marinelli. You keep an eye on Cincinnati on Marvin Lewis. You keep an eye on Scott Linehan in St. Louis. And you keep an eye on Herman Edwards in Kansas City because we've seen some bad football. But of those five teams, I've seen some pathetic football, and in particular the last four. We'll keep the Raiders out because they won a game. But you cannot go through an offseason and perform like these teams have and fully expect it. Who your job's safe. While players have to make plays, then what were you doing in your evaluation process this offseason to get them right? Something is not right, and if this continues and these three teams, these four teams or five teams, continue to play the way they've played and we don't see... Normally if a team's 0-2, you can say, I know they're better, like the Giants last year. I know they're better than that. I'm looking at these teams. I don't know that they're better. Matter of fact, they may be worse. So be alert because poor performances this weekend, you may see a coach fired sooner than later. We don't wish that on anybody. But guess, guess what? That's why you get paid, and that's why it's a pressure job. Deal with it. If you can't get your team ready to play, you've got to put somebody in there who can. And injuries now, I hear people in the whispers, oh, my gosh, there's more injuries this year than ever. No, it's because you're watching the Seattle Seahawks wide receivers, and unfortunately a, a lot of them have been banged up. Bob Sanders, who's a superstar for the Colts, banged up. Tom Brady out for the season, superstar. It makes it, when, when Brady and Sanders are hurt, it makes it look like 400 guys in the league are hurt. But I can tell you this, it's no different. Every year somebody gets hurt, every year there's a devastating injury, a blown out knee. Every year people say, oh, there's got to be more injuries. We've got to protect the players more. You can't protect them any more than we already do. The last thing we can do now to protect players more is to play flag football. We can't. It's unfortunate. It's a physical, brutal, nasty game. And if, you, if you're faint of heart, don't apply and don't watch. It's a shame people get hurt, but the human body wasn't made to have 280 pounds running one way and 235 pounds running the other full speed and have a collision. That's not what it was made for, but that's why these guys are the best athletes in the world because they're also the toughest because they put it on the line every single week and unfortunately injuries are going to happen. Got to have to deal with them, folks. The only thing left to do is put flags on them or just cancel Sunday games. God forbid we keep getting people hurt, but it's no more this year than any other time. Just happens to be a couple superstars at the top and I understand can't protect them any more than we do unless we put red jerseys. Now, I'm not just talking about quarterbacks. I'm talking about any position and play flag football. Just can't do it. These guys are as protected as they can be right now in this league. Have a good weekend. So you think you can tackle a pro? There's only one way to find out. Click on fantasy at opensports.com.